Hi guys, uh, so for this video we're actually going to add two new services and a base class for our controller before we start actually making the controller. Um, so we're going to do a bit of work on our game scene. Uh, we're going to get rid of the camera. We'll, we'll add that through code, but uh, we're going to create a really simple plane for ourselves uh, on the scene and we're going to create a directional light you know, just your your standard Unity basics. Um, we're gonna add some kind of material. Um, I hate materials folders, really. Like, I wish I knew a better way to organize it all, but we'll just call this ground, and we'll make it a memorable shade of teal, and we'll add it to our our plane. There we go. We've got a directional light in our plane, and we're gonna make a uh, make a little obstacle for ourselves. Um, you know, I like to want to show you guys pathfinding. Uh, we'll make this plane say five, 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 and five, and we'll scatter a few of these obstacles around. You know, maybe make this one a little bit bigger because we're going to try and find some paths. It's going to do some, you know, f oh, I don't want to do that. It's going to do some stuff trying to go around these objects. Uh, so here's our just super simple demo world. I don't even know if these are high enough to be obstacles. Well, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to put these all under a world root. I see two planes. Why? Doesn't matter. I just needed that one. And we're gonna we're gonna set up some layers. So uh, we're gonna have a world layer and an entity layer. And that's just for doing ray casting. Um, you want to know? We'll we'll do it to all the children. Uh, actually, I've done that wrong. We also need a third layer called obstacles. And if it's not apparent why, you'll see in a minute. We'll add all of our cubes to be obstacles. So our map is uh, it's got ground, it's got world, which is uh, anything that is walkable. And then it's got obstacles, which is anything that will block our player from moving around. And we're going to just move all those up just to here so that they're a little more obstacle-y. You know? I think we could give them a height of one. Where are they? Does that make them floating? No, nope, that looks looks like they could have a height of two. We'll say 1.5, a little bit more interesting. Anyways, um, so for this project, we're using the Aaron Granberg A Star Pathfinding project, and it has a, a script called the um, A Star Path. Where is it? I think you can add it from the menu. We're going to add it to the root of the world. We'll say component pathfinding um, pathfinder, yeah, which adds the A star path script to the root of our world, and we're going to create a new grid graph. And what the grid graph will do is it's a it's a it's a pathfinder. So it has a, a grid of nodes, and it's going to say, well, this is either walkable or unwalkable, and it's going to provide us ways to query the graph and say, how do I go a path from A to B? And that's really all it does. So we're going to set this up to be 50-50 uh, with a center of 0 and 0, and we'll hit scan, and that, that should cover our graph. Uh, oops, uh, but the problem here is that it's not picking up the obstacles. So what we need to look at is under the inspector uh, collision testing, we want to set the mask um, and for the height testing as well. Collision testing is basically uh, this is what we can uh, have as an obstacle. It, it, it goes around the map with a collider that's in the shape of a capsule and it says like is this walkable for this entity and height testing is actually uh, for what is walkable so we need to put that to world and if we scan again we should see the map update so now we see these these little red squares mean that it's an unwalkable area 
if we try and get a path to any of those points it'll just uh, not allow us to do that and um, we're going to make our controller just look for the nearest path so if we click here in the middle of the obstacle it'll take us to the edge if we're on this side it'll say here uh, and so on and so forth so um, actually one more thing this is a little low res so if you have a small level you can do this where you cut the node size in half and double it and that gives us a bit nicer of, of edges for our map I like it so we'll save this scene and um, now we need to make a uh, we need to make a service to access this pathfinder so we'll say the iPathfinder interface and we will create a pathfinder class. Um, we'll load these up. This is a public interface iPathfinder. And we're going to add two methods void scan and vector3 get nearest vector3 target position. So that's what I said earlier. We're going to ask it what's the nearest position to a certain target position and that's how we'll get the path to that spot. Um, something else to mention here um, is that this is doing this what we're about to do is a really nice way to get rid of singletons in your application. Like uh, a lot I noticed a lot of Unity's asset store packages have this tendency to use like a singleton to access everything and strange is or sorry um a star is uh, pathfinding project is no different but strange will allow you to create a layer of separation between the inter between the um the singleton and your code and it'll just make it so if you ever want to switch it's just it's just so much easier it's a matter of changing your uh interface and changing the way you do the Pathfinder implementation rather than s running through all your code and trying to find all of the references to that one singleton and uh, for that matter singleton is global state and a lot of people will tell you that having any global state is is really bad um, or especially global state that can be accessed from anywhere in code I mean uh, strange is building in a sense global state within the context um, but it's contained right so um, it's just it's just more manageable that way anyways we're gonna create a public class pathfinder and we need to basically implement two methods scan and get nearest public vector 3 get nearest and this is a wrapper for the a star path which is what we saw in the inspector and it gives you an active that's an instance of a star path it's it's uh, basically going to be it's going to be this this instance and we're going to say active scan but what we use this for is um, especially if you have some procedural maps where they're not able to be scanned at um, scanned at startup like you can't preload the scan you can trigger it to rescan so it'll um, it'll find a new path for a dynamically created map and get nearest um, what we'll do is we'll say return a star path active get nearest for the target position and then we're going to pass in a new um, pathfinding n n constraint Oh, I can't spell and we want to set walkable to be true and then of that constraint we're going to take the clamped position so uh, this hides a lot of complexity right every time we call um, ipathfinder get nearest we're not having to write out this uh, NN constraint. I mean, when I was using the raw A star path in my controller code, I had this big ugly line all the time, multiple times in my um, in my uh, 
um, controller's implementation. My controller shouldn't care that I'm using a star path. It shouldn't care that I need to pass it a pathfinding NN constraint with walkable to be true. I mean, that's just super crazy to have that in your controller. So this is a nice way to just cleanly separate everything. Good, okay, and, <clears throat> excuse me. The second service we're gonna create is an iGame camera. Wow, caps lock. iGame camera. And we're gonna create a simple game camera implementation. Public interface iGame camera. And uh, let's see, what do we need to do here? So um, this is another thing that a lot of people have as singletons that we can just get rid of, right? Um, a lot of people, including the Bolt demo, have a, an implementation of their own personal camera. And you say um, something something camera dot instance dot set target. And that's uh, OK. I mean, it's not a bad way of doing it. But this is a really nice way of doing it, I think. And um, what we're going to do here is just <clears throat> you can define something like transform target. And um, in your controller, you inject the iGame camera, and you just set itself to the target. And it's shorter, and you hide a lot of stuff. But uh, for this implementation, we're actually just, I mean, we can fit the whole screen in one camera. So we're not super worried about um, uh, cr you know any follow behavior. We're trying to keep this simple. We don't want to, this isn't a tutorial about making a camera. But what we want to give to the outside world is two things. Um, the layer mat, the camera itself, for getting ray casts, for getting uh, screen to ray, screen point to ray. Well, you'll see. You call camera screen point to ray, and then we need the layer mask that is the world layer that tells us what is walkable. And I think that the, just it makes a lot of sense to have the camera control this because it's it's the way you get rays, and um, it's just nicely done this way. So. Uh, something to show you here well I have two options yeah we'll start we'll just uh, implement the camera here so uh, this is gonna be unlike the others it's gonna be a mono behavior and we have to handle that a little differently which is why I was debating what to show you first but we'll do the implementations and then I'll show you the bindings afterwards so this is going to be a mono behavior that we attach to our camera and we're going to have like just this is a nice way to add um, configurable editor values while same time at the same time fulfilling the interface like it, do, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do these both public outside the unity oh sod outside the unity world where you know public uh, things like this are editor configurable values. And for layer masks, um, it's just much easier to do it through Unity rather than trying to cr do your own bit shifting and whatnot. Um, so let's go ahead and add this to our um, camera. We're going to go to the main scene. We're actually going to add it to uh, the main camera in here because we want to load this with the context ahead of time. It's a bit weird to have a game scene with no game camera, but it makes things easier and you'll, you'll see that. So we have our game camera script and it fulfills the iGame camera interface. And what we need to do is go to our rogue context, which is, um, for those of you who've forgotten, it's in strange rogue context. And we need to add some new bindings to our injection binder. We'll say injection binder bind I game cam. Mm, I'll start with uh, I pathfinder to pathfinder to singleton, and that will create that as a singleton for us. But for the camera, we need to do something a little different. So we know that the um, camera is actually kicking around, so we can say game object find object of type uh, simple game camera whoops 
and we have the reference to the object so we'll say injection binder bind i game camera to to value camera and that'll essentially make it uh, another quote unquote singleton but actually bound to a value that you've already set up in the um, in the editor and if we had this compiling correctly we would see the property it's not implement interface get the okay yeah we haven't finished it so I thought we might be able to skip a little bit of work but I'm gonna cache the camera because it's just um, something that's nice to do So only um, only a Unity object, a modern behavior only has like camera can be null if you don't have a camera on it. So, but we know this is going to be a camera because we've attached it to our our main camera object. That did a lot. Okay, so do I get the layer? Good, I get the layer mask. And you can see like doing some kind of layer mask by hand would be much more tedious than doing it this way, I think. Anyways, um, that's pretty much uh, how to implement our services. And they should also be injectable. Uh, I need to do one more thing with the camera, which is give it a little bit of a nicer um, a ni just, just a nicer uh, makeup here. So what we'll do is center it. Uh, probably um, 30 minus 20 and degrees 55. That should create a good centered um, camera. And if we put it under the context, so so the camera like looks at its root now, and uh, we'll move around the root, and that'll allow us to follow whatever we attach the root to. Um, but like I said, we're not implementing any follow behavior because this isn't a tutorial about cameras, so uh, I'm not going to bother with that. But if we save the scene and then we start it, we see that our um, camera is looking nicely at our controller and we have the map loaded. And um, we also can look in the uh, scene view and see that its Pathfinder has nicely scanned. But if it wasn't scanning, for example, we could um, do something like in our start app command we could inject the pathfinder and um, in execute uh, one of the first things that we, wa we might want to do is say pathfinder scan Which it looks like it just does it automatically, anyways. Ah, yes. So, one thing we forgot to do is inherit from my Pathfinder, so that binding just wouldn't work. And so that's a good time to sort of make a point about Strange, which is that you know, with with all these problems. Okay, so we can't scan because it's not in the scene to start with. So actually where we would want to do this call is is um, when we get the response um, from the map being loaded, which, you know, it's working fine, so we're not going to bother because I would we'd have to listen for a whole new event and it would just be a lot of work. Um, but something... To a point to make here is that Strange does add complexity to your app, so um, getting all the bindings right is a bit of work, and you have to ask yourself if your game is complex enough to bother with Strange. But I think, I mean, even if we only have these three services, 
We've already isolated and hid away a lot of complexity from our implementation classes. And when you get to the controller, I think you'll see how nice it is to just have all this stuff tucked away. And uh, hopefully you'll also be a strange fan after watching these videos. So um, that's all for now. We've created two new services to be used by our controller. And in the next uh, video, we're going to create the player controller and we're going to implement the, the loops that we need to control it with the Pathfinder in Strange and Bolt.